Here's your agenda. Yeah. <laughs> this is blank. All right, Lisa, do you have anything? I know, I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's my something I need to say, but I can't think. So. There's a letter from the city of Maxville in regards to trash mm -hmm. service. Oh, and here's, I want those minutes corrected. From the I to the we. Okay. So you've got, we have two here. One amendment. Those are last week's minutes. And this is the amended yeah. one. And um, we see, received a check from EMC. Our safety dividend um, for August 2012 to August 2013, it was $15,908. How much did you say? $15,908. For being well? For being, for having a good safety service. Well, that's good. So. Is that something we get every year? If. If. We, we don't. If. If. Yeah. If. if. We so, don't is that an improvement? Good. Yeah. I still need to do your voting bill for Casey. And I understand correctly that Nisley was going to do a proposal within the next month or two. Mm -hmm. With different options, I believe. So the city of Maxville... I wish Maxfield we could get a clarification. And this I told the city of Maxville that you were... You had talked to Nisley, and she said they had talked to them, too. Nisley had talked to them, so... So this letter is just FYI? Yes. I know it's funny we got that either the day over the day after okay. Nisley was here. So we'll just keep that in mind. Alright, so this on the voting delegate would be whoever's going to be the delegate and whoever's going to be the first and second alternate. Mm -hmm. I'll move the to be the voting delegate with the KAC. Second that. <laughs> Who's going to be the first alternate? Kurt. <laughs> Is that a okay. motion? Wait a minute, you got it. You got it. One, two, three, just as we said. I make a motion. Wait a minute. No, we have to do the first one. All right. That's the one. It's been moved and second that I'm delegate for the KAC. I'm afraid to say aye. 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 Motion carried. Then we have to do the first and second alternate. I make a motion that Kurt Perry shall be the first alternate. Is there a second? I'll second it. It's been moved and second all. Kurt will be the first alternate to the KAC. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. I didn't vote against it. <laughs> like to put in there one time. Second alternate. I'll make a motion that Shane be. Whoa! Another one? I can't believe First, there. second. Definitely. Delegate, first and there second. Okay. And Mr. Steinmates will be the second alternate. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> All right, we got that taken care of. You can fill it in, correct? Yeah, sure. <coughs> All right. Steve, yes. you ready? I'm ready.
and to get some of our stuff processed. So at least it wouldn't have been getting anything probably for the last two and a half or two weeks or so. Uh, Julie has has a firm grasp on this, and so you know it's my firm belief that um, that more and more of that should be transferred over to her. They can stick to it, you know. Um, and they're doing the research on our patients. But this is a pretty good month um, so far, $12,000. Uh, so we're, uh, the, the funds are coming in, uh, and, and our run volume is even uh, decreasing. Uh, that certainly has my eye on it. Uh, we ran, a, we ran uh, a call for Pratt the other night because we had good staffing. We ran uh, one yesterday for uh, Holly Valley to make sure they had insurance before we did it. We had adequate staffing. And, and that will usually bring in an ALS transfer to Hayes, maybe how much? I don't know. Thousand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or thereabouts. Um, August 22nd, if you guys will see, is the last Medicare payment. So it's been like 14 days, possibly. Um, we called Medicare. They said our MPI. Like I said, we did the revalidation request. We had to send in corrections. Uh, the corrections were there. They just didn't input them in. And so one of them deactivated our MPI number. Got a hold of them. They reactivated. They said that we have to wait 30 or not till the end of the week to resubmit. I think there's 30 days worth of claims, and then they'll start paying them again. So everything is fixed. We just want to let you guys know that there was a little bit of a delay. Great. Okay. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, there have been talk last week about an administrative assistance. With with moving more of building responsibilities over to the hospital, I I kind of thought about this issue, and, and, and I don't put a burden on the taxpayer of an additional person. Um, but there are even like fire uh, fire administrative responsibilities. What I'd like to do uh, with your guys' blessing, I talked to the sheriff first, and I remember that I did as well. His, uh, his dispatcher in, in the graveyard shift uh, certainly has idle time. Uh, she already helps us, uh, one of them in particular already helps us significantly already in, in uh, uh, some uh, general command type things if we had a big incident. And um, if, if you guys would be willing to entertain uh, letting that person, I, I think we'd have to recognize it in some small way monetarily for the additional duties. But I, I don't think the person would have, I haven't spoken to the person, but I wouldn't think that they'd have great reception to do on that. What, what would they be doing? They, they would be doing a lot of the administrative uh, duties as they pertain to uh, fire. So, you know, the, the problem that we kind of run into in, in the past is that, that um, We looked at, at, at like salary increases and we kind of had to do it with titles. And that isn't always the, the right way to do it because, um, you know, you got station chiefs that uh, they really don't need somebody to be over them that doesn't have near the experience than what they have. And, uh, and they can manage just about most of their stuff by themselves. It's just some of the administrative matters. And uh, so, so they would handle the, uh, they could do the running trip for fire. They could, they're just sitting it's online. They can do the run entry, uh, and and that same program does the payroll. So they could help us do the payroll, they could help us do the, uh, it's it's not a lot of stuff, but at least administratively, um, in, in the post my area, my era, uh, there'd be uh, a way that uh, they wouldn't have to rely on uh, somebody from out there overseeing them. They would be able, to, be able to oversee their own operation with administrative assistance, and uh, and then they, you know, they they can go directly to that person. For the time being, I, I would just go over and, and make sure the payroll gets up to uh, to need it. See, <coughs> that person would <coughs> do any of the billing on the fire runs, or no, um, or no, I, you know, I'd like to even look at that. Anymore. You know, we, we implemented that kind of a, as a purpose of kind of controlling. I, I don't know that we need, need to continue that. There was a purpose at the time. If we run into a problem, if, you know, th 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 just think about that. I, I never implemented that as a, as a means of, of monetary. 
it was it was just to try because a lot of uh, counties what they'll do is that they put this giant fine. We're going to fine you ten thousand dollars. Well, they're never willing to do that, and so everybody just will laugh at that. You know, they ain't never going to do that. And so I wanted to implement at least something that we were willing to do if if we seen it necessary. But I, but I think I think everybody's kind of realized that they need to be a little bit safer, and, and that was the whole intention. So is that policy still in place then? It's still in place at this <laughs> time, but that's, you know, the, that was a different era when we implemented right, that. Yeah. So I, I, I think you guys think about it. If it's something that you think that we would prefer not to do, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Uh, and then if it becomes a problem again, we, we can look at re I think, I think it's something to think about, but I think, you know, I would like to see the policy, I guess. Okay. Just to see if, you know, if we can... I don't want to do away with it, like you said, if we have the conditions to such that we do have 30 fires in 30 days again. Right. You know, and, and then, uh, then we're sitting here thinking, we need to do something. Well, I think the point in that was was to educate. And, uh, you know, because the thing, you know, the mandates come down, down from the state fire marshal, and well, we don't, you know, we don't follow the rules. You know, we, we need to burn when we need to, and, you know, and then, well, we, we, we hadn't reissued, uh, what, what we did to start with is we had, we had them all come in to do a new burn program. And we, and we wrote on that very specifically what, uh, because, heck, there was like, uh, you know, people had uh, like three or four generations down signed it. Huh. And so they didn't even know what, what they were operating under, really. Very frankly, they, 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 yeah, they didn't yeah. even really know. And, and now they, they realized that they, they had to be the person yeah. Uh, or, or the person stated on that form. And so they, they've actually read the form to understand what the um, what the expectations are. Right. So I'll bring a copy of the policy in the next, next, uh, next yeah. meeting. Um, Bigfoot, the Bigfoot truck, uh, they fixed that cylinder wall that was that was scored, put it back together, uh, drove it away. Another Apparently, another sleeve is, was stored. Um, I, I don't think we're looking at significant cost, but uh, they had a, a, about three other major projects come in, and so it's kind of on the it's it's in line. And that truck's from here. That's that that's that first one that we got that looked so great because it already been used. And now now we know that that's not necessarily great. Part of the use. Engine 21 next week uh, will go to Hayes uh, to have the water tank fixed. Uh, oh, this is, uh, I, I just wrote up a little blurb on that. That uh, is, I just got notification from the state that we, uh, we again uh, received the emergency management performance grant fund for $7,014. That, uh, that's the same amount that we received last year. Um, I, I think once I kind of get that down, just exactly what it is that fulfills the requirement without going crazy, um, it, it'll be okay to continue it on. Um, if, if they continue to ask for more and more and more, then uh, it might become more work than $7,000 worth. So right now we'll continue it on. And in regards to that, they, uh, they told me to submit it uh, without your signature. Now they do need to take <laughs> Okay, so we we'll need a motion on that for my authorization. And that's for this fund. It's, yeah, to participate. I submitted the whole package. They just, um, I submitted it with, without, I thought I had already had, we might have to put back through our notes. I thought I already, I thought you guys had already okayed it, and I thought you already signed it, but they said I they didn't have it, and so, so I'll get you know. Make a motion we allow Clayton's signature on this emergency management performance grant. Second. And it's been moved and seconded that I'm authorized to sign for this application for emergency management grant. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, the annual uh, emergency management state emergency management conference is uh, four days next week. Uh, uh, this are you guys all attend just two of those days. Uh, they they're pretty select. They they set it up so you need them hours to get reserved. 
Uh, building maintenance, just an update on that. St. John, the station here, we finally got our windows in. Uh, we put a storm door, uh, on, a new storm door in front of that building. And uh, the 15 year old hot water heater went out and we had that replaced. And we got two bids for that uh, a bid from a vendor in St. John and then one in Stafford. And Stafford fellow was the, the better bid. So he's already done that work. The fire corridor agreement, it's passed all three councils, uh, but Maxwell still needs to get the paperwork. And so just simply get the paperwork to bring that. Hazmat awareness training, uh, certified training. Uh, I talked to the state. Really all of our firefighters should have that. It's just the very basic knowledge of hazmat awareness. I can teach that uh, and, and I'll do that at the crew meeting. Um, and and uh, Katie is supposed to give me that information for sure. And then uh, just uh, we may put in the notes again on we, uh, the St. John Hospital Foundation uh, bought us a power cot and we are still waiting on that. They had a recall on the thing. So they recalled all of them, and so they, they, didn't, they didn't put any more out. And this, I don't know how you stay in business, having two or three months delay on it. Uh, uh, but it would slip at a certain spot. Well, you, had, you had it for a while then? No, but they never got it to us. We never <laughs> bought it. Recall, recall, it was it. Uh, they, recalled, they recalled all the ones that were out, and they didn't put any new ones out. So we're waiting on that. They told us the work on that. End of August, and I guess it's not going to make it to the end of August. It's going to be September. So, uh, just if we put it in the notes, I, I let Doris know so she could let the rest of the foundation people know that we didn't receive it and just not, uh, not get pictures and, and, and give them thanks again. We're just I can still tell waiting. Too. But we're still waiting. On I'll tell Kim we didn't get it. So, I, I mean, uh, I, I, I hope that it would be pretty soon. And, and we do, we're, we're only going to get one of those. And I know how that uh, makes the others feel. But those things are awful expensive. I'm talking awful expensive. Um, we, we wouldn't have bought one. I mean, frankly, we would not have bought one, period, if it wasn't meant for the hospital foundation. And the crews and the other stations just need to understand that. I try to keep everything the same in the stations so we don't have that uh, jealousy. But this is just one that, when the foundation will buy you something like that, and 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 it'll uh, it'll also carry a heavier patient, and our patients in America is getting heavier, uh, and so if if it was needed at one of the other areas, we can bring it over. Yeah. So everybody can use it, but it, but it will be here because. Then, is that a piece of equipment that you could find, some you know, used? Basic used one that we could, I mean, we're, we're, we're what we use that up every day at, at the other two we, places. We could look at that. Um, we, we could certainly look at that. I, I'm, I'm a little concerned uh, with the power feature. I don't know if there's, uh, I, I'll talk to some people just to make sure that we don't have to, that there's nothing mechanically. I don't think there really is, though. I think it's just a hydraulic lift that's battery operated. So that's, the, that's a good idea. Has those units been at that long, though, that they have to have to find one that's been refurbished? Well, like Wichita, I mean, they just go through so many patients that uh, they, they would have ones. Mm -hmm. You'd have to go to a busy service. Uh, but Wichita. If you had a very good bit of one of those, well, why would you get rid of it? Well, yeah. But the price is significantly yeah. different. I mean, yeah. it really is. It's significant. That's what I mean. We're, we're yeah. going to put one over at Maxwell or staff, yeah, or, yeah. you know, or even in a standby unit. That you just don't want one to fail, though. Yeah. They might have sold it for a reason. It, you know, it, it, for, for big patients, it's, it's fantastic for, uh, because it has, it even has some side features that, that attach to it. So, you know, with, uh, it, it really gets concerning when you when you have a, a, a large patient because they're very narrow cots. Mm -hmm. And if you get the lean or something, you end up either hurting the patient or both hurting the patient and one of the tags. So, um, but if you get enough help with the other ones, you, you, that's what you just need to make sure that you get enough help. And, and we're pretty good about getting uh, you know, our firefighters come out to help and uh, hospital people to help. And so we'll, we'll keep an eye out for, those, for the hospital the ones that, uh, or I mean, uh, uh, Probably a refurb one. Yeah. Oh.
for, yeah, first of all, we've got to see. So, some people don't. Some texts don't like them. Well, because it caught them. Yeah. The hospital foundation. It'll lift it, but the cots it. The hospital foundation basically just said they'd pay for it and, and, let, and instructed you to go look for one. Is that the way that works? They just said they would they would purchase one. They they didn't they, they didn't tell us which one to get. I mean, yeah. they, they let us decide that. And this one, by all means, it, it, there's two of them out there, but this one is the lead one. But it had a point in there. From what I understand, it had a point, and if it wasn't all the way up, they had some ones that uh, slipped. And once they had that, then they had to say, stop, let's fix this problem. So I'm glad they did before we got ours. I, I, that wouldn't have been good if we got ours and then we got a recall weeks later. But it's like anything mechanical, it's, it has the potential for failure. Has anything ever been done countywide? If it was, it was probably even before your time like, to talk to Kate out about the intersection of 15 and 21. As a county, as a county commissioner, I thought they did once according to what part yeah, of it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. There was a group. What was that? Was that Kate's group? Lisa Foster was around? Yeah, oh, there was a whole group of them. I can't remember what the, the group was called. Larry Olson was involved and Lisa Foster. And, yeah. But yeah. they tried to get an overpass out there. And, the Sheriff Parr has um, turned it in several times. Yeah. Uh, I know. But I don't think anything has ever came from the county. I would, I would just like to Doctor letter saying that I would like you know, for you to look and restudy the issue. I agree, and I think we could we could send them a formal letter. Yes, and just that we're concerned about the safety of 281 and Highway 50 you know, as a board of county commissioners. Right, exactly. Sure about that. Probably. He's done it numerous times, yeah. but I think if they hear from right him and us. And our representatives and our senators, and we all do it at the same time. Maybe they will at least look at to see whether there's something they can do to improve the situation. I would even I would even move that we send a formal letter from the county commissioners saying that we do study some improvements to the utility highway for safety improvements. Uh -huh. Two K dollars. But you have to go through the division first, and then to the state. I mean, the state being Topeka, the Department of Transportation. Would you start with the division first, or would you just copy both? I'd copy both. 
and the division is in Pratt now, I believe. No, there's two well, divisions. I don't see that right there. It's there's two divisions. Great it's a split division of Pratt. Splits right there. Right? Yes. I doubt it. No, because I Great it's, Bend does the I'm northern. I'm sure it, and it's going to go to to be for the. I I would say bypass the division. Yeah. And it's going to go there anyway. Directly to the director of the Kansas Department of Transportation. That's where it's going to go anyway. Eventually, the division will pass it to him. And maybe KDH. I, I will just tell you, Mitch Holmes, of course, daughter was in that mm -hmm. accident, went and talked to the KDOT director, and he says, I knew you'd be here, but you're prejudiced. We need to hear from somebody else in your county besides you. We can definitely do that. So I thought, okay, well, they yeah. need to hear from somebody else in the county besides you. We can do that. Yeah, if it, well, and if, yeah, it takes, if it takes a group of people to go to Topeka, we can you know, we can do well, that. Yeah. We won't take the county car, but we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can charter a bus. Okay, so did you make a motion? Yes, I did. And what exactly was your motion? That we send a formal letter to KDOT uh, to review safety improvements at 50 and 281 Highway. We would like to see them review. Okay, the motion was made and was second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Should that be Corbin to like uh, Mitch and that Marshall and then Governor? <coughs> Should you Corbin for all of them too? So they're, I don't know. It'd be fine. I wouldn't hurt. I mean, they, they've all been, I know. Those, those two have already been but, to KDOT, but he'll find out. They can, they can read the paper too. Yeah, no problem. Yes. <laughs> I think the key is for several of us to hit him at the same time. Are you done? <laughs> Come to you guys. It's your meeting. We're going to wait until 9.30, and then we'll officially adjourn. We can recess now. We can wait a while. All right, we'll recess. This is what I'm actually mailing out today. Yeah. You're going to get it a little bit anyway. Right. <laughs> um, and, and since this is a, this will be the zoning meeting, you know, uh, and, and this is a conditional use, so once again, this will, after the zoning board makes a recommendation, they're going to vote on it, and then I'll just come and let you guys know if they approved it or not. This is the conditional use. They do handle that. Wow. The special use, they don't. They make a recommendation to you guys. To just two different permits. But, but yeah, it's, uh, it's actually going to be up there. If we can find it on that there, Matt. It's in Hayes Township, in Section 10. Okay, and it's in the northeast quarter. So, so that's going to be just a couple right miles east of Peace Church, isn't it? Yeah, right off of Vera Road. Yeah. It's a good. That's right. That's a good. Yeah, right south of. I mean, yeah, right south. Yeah, they can't get any worse reception than right there. It's, uh, so that's just <laughs> bike and visit basically a mile and a quarter back yeah. to the west, and then Catons. Uh, yeah, and then on here is where we that little yellow. Is, that's where they like to sit. Down. And they've already did, they said they sent all their information to us, and I'll take this to the zoning. But they've already did the site, the setback, and so forth like that. Uh, oh, so this is in the southwest yeah. corner, yeah. corner of that quarter. Oh, wait, well, that's encouraging. You said it's in the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I did say that. Okay. Yeah. So there's a red. Yeah. <laughs> southwest, southwest, northwest quarter, okay. section 10. So we're okay. going to the northwest yeah. corner and the southwest quarter. The south so it'll be two miles from I can do this. Okay. okay. And they've already, you know, they to do this here, they've already went through the FAA, and then they've actually had to go through the wildlife and parks, being that close to mm -hmm. Clavera. Clavera. Yeah. So, so I think they're just going to probably be pretty cut and dry next week. What did what did the wildlife parks tell them? 
I mean, did they just have any stipulations? No, or? no, they didn't. They have no. a map that they can tell where every bird flies. Yeah, yeah. They, know, yeah. they know ahead of time whether you're okay or not. They that there's no more. <laughs> more <laughs> I've heard that statistics before. They glow in the night, too, those things on the lines. They do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're driving down Stafford Elm with Blacktop at night, you can see them. Really? Mm -hmm. The ones out here along First Street, you can't. Well, they reflect off your headlights, uh, let me say that. Oh, okay. Because some of them are yellow, and some of them are, are silver. Yeah, I didn't say that right. Yeah, they don't glow, maybe. But they, they reflect. reflect. Damn. <laughs> so actually, that letter is like a material in there. Make it glow. <laughs> Uh, uh, the uh, legal, it should be in the newspaper today. There's supposed to be in the paper today mm -hmm. about, how, about the zoning meeting. And then this is actually being mailed out to the property owners today. Cool. And then we have to wait that 14 day, 20 days elapse, and then we'll have that the, the zoning meeting on the 23rd of there. Yeah. I can't imagine any opposition. Uh, no. Did you know when, yeah. when you're up in the community center, you know, you got to stand in there. I don't get good reception even sitting in the building. Right. Uh, but, so this is going to be. Or anywhere east. Yeah, clear to hell. This is going to even a 281 and 19. Right. There's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it gets worse. From there to the county line, it's a. How did they say, Carl, how big of an area this will? the coverage on? No, no, that's probably something that the, the somebody on the zoning will probably ask them, you know, how how they're gonna have it set, you know, to pick up frequency wise. You know, like on it's kinda of weird on, on I seventy if you go you know if you go most of those are set for length. But you get even two, three miles off of I seventy, you can look at a tower and you won't have reception now. Yeah. yeah. But it's they're set for the length of it, not mm -hmm. the then I worry about everybody else. Well, I mean, it's only yeah, important they need the power here, so. to go on our side. But in that location, they're sort of, hopefully they're just going out. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, but they're, 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 from that position <laughs> to, say, like Sterling, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, even out of our county, it's still, a, yeah, that's, I mean, that whole yeah. road's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, when you, is that Rice County or Reno? Right, right. Is there a tower? How far do you have to go before you get a tower there? Well, in Sterling, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get in Sterling and have coverage, don't you? Yeah, between Lyons and Sterling. There's a tower. I don't know if there's anything on this west of Sterling, though, no, at all. That's, that would be bad then. There, there's, a big, there's a big gap there then. Alden probably has problems. Yes. Yeah, they do. Alden has problems. <clears throat> okay, and since we're kind of talking about. Yeah. There's that track, you know, you, well, the track account we've done there at Dyke and Joe is just, that seems like it's 459 vehicles a day. Really? Um, wherever they tag. Well, it, it drops it's off. 100 vehicles, one guy that's going the, back to Well, it's, yeah, oh, there's two bumpers up there. <laughs> two bumpers. <laughs> but the, the numbers drop off a little bit going north. They don't drop off as much going east and west. There's a lot going north to that intersection. <coughs> and the same thing is true with force. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of traffic. Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> Next couple of weeks, especially. Yeah. yeah. Starting Friday. So that'll be, and then I'll come in after that. That's on a Monday night. I'll probably come in that Wednesday and let you guys know. And I'm not too sure, you know, after the zoning, like, I'm not sure how long it takes for them to even start building. You know, the one went out here at uh, Mr. Fox's, right, it, that didn't take long after we had the zoning. Uh, we may be one of the last things, you know, when we had that area, they was all over it. So, they may be ready to build it. Yeah. So, I did see up on, um, North of Dunans on 156. You know, they say these towers just collapsed. It, that one collapsed. For real. I'm not sure what happened. It's laying actually on top of the little building that sat on me. It's laying on top of it like uh -huh. a teeter totter. So they do just collapse. I don't know what happened. Did you see that? that yeah. 
But that was several weeks ago. Was that in that? Was that one during that wind? Must have been. Okay, because that was shortly after that storm. But I didn't think it would have brought it down. But now we, the grip has gone to Ellsworth and was coming back. And just laying on that little building, yeah. isn't it? It's just collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> Does Bryson use that money behind the body this time he hits his house? Oh, I don't know. In town here? I think they do. Yeah. That's who this is, by the way, too. Do they use it, too? Bryson? Or, uh, One of the boxes is, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty big tower. So this would be nice, and they have everything in here, and it should go, it should go quite well. Um, on a break board, everything is going pretty good. Um, but the rain, our 17%, we've kind of felt behind on that. We still have like three townships, Hayes, um, Stanford, Stafford, and Albano. Yeah. Um, actually, three pretty big townships with a lot of well, we use a lot of stuff, uh, and uh, we're working on another project for the pad. Actually, this will be one of them. Um, I'm kind of sure what I'm doing. The state has requested, well, not requested, directed, <laughs> that a lot of counties do things a little different when it comes to the towers and so forth. Do you guys have an appointment right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to where, um, and even the wind farms. So where some counties will tax the little pads underneath them and the roads, and then other counties don't. The reason some counties don't is because you can typically farm or you can pasture right up to them. Uh, but what the state has come out with a directive on is, is saying that that's still a lease agreement, so it's income producing, and the counties that are not taxing them accordingly is, is, is incorrect. Hmm. So, even like this, since we're talking about this tower, this what what I'm doing is is we're going to go around and, and and for every tower that's not state assessed, on like out here where they run kind of cross country, A and R actually owns that land and they own the tower. So that would be state assessed. That wouldn't be a separate tax statement. But when you get to a tower like this, that's on a person's land that there's a lease agreement, this is going to have to be a commercial site on their ag land. Which it does kind of make sense, but um, but what's sad is the tower is exempt <laughs> from taxes. So does the whole quarter then, Carl, go into the commercial Now, tax? what I'm going to do is I'll kind of show you, and I didn't make a copy of this, but maybe you guys can see this. What I'm doing is, is I'm putting a note on the front here. What we're doing, what I'm doing is I came with the tower location is by looking at some of the agreements is they typically say it's like a two acre area. This doesn't take up the two acres because they, they cattle underneath it and this, that, and the other, most of them. But so what I'm looking at is a two acre area and then I can carry a miscellaneous value. What, what I'm going to do is I went back and looked at our market value per land and, and did a, a calculation to come up with $7,500 for the commercial site. So what that would do then, and, and, and I have it here, this is their last year's value. This would be like temporary, their, their new value. But as you can see, that letter C wasn't on here before. C is for commercial, and it's going to be for the site pad only. That's $7,500. That, see, that should be around probably two hundred and thirty dollars in taxes. If you take seventy five hundred, just a minute. Yeah. You got to find it. And what's the average rule no levy? Would you say one fifty five? Probably. Seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred times point two five, because it will be considered commercial. Times point one five five. Then one five 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 again. <coughs> one, one, one. Times. <laughs> right. $145 is about what that tax statement then what this is going to generate wise. So it's not really 
exceptionally high when you look at the agreement, but we have to do this. Um, and we have a, a South Central meeting Friday, and I need to bring up because if you, on the memo it, it brings in the, um, it, it talks about the power lines also. <laughs> you, know, you have the power lines then, you have the new um, the Green Belt Express that's coming through. That's all that goes across people's land. That's the lease agreement. They're getting dollars for that. So we're not only going out doing 17 percent. We got to follow these lines. And the reason I want to bring this up at the South Central meeting is once again, if the counties aren't consistent from from Stafford to Pratt, then we're going to be set up in in, in court of tax bill hearings. But this is all everything. This is a new memo that came out uh, May 13, and uh, we're addressing it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a lot of counties are not addressing it, but they will have to. But once again, if we do this for 2014 taxes, and Reno and Pratt and the others don't, we're going to be probably put down on for a little while. But we do have the memo now for it. So we're going to follow it, we're, we're, this is, and this is how we're going to do it. So when they get their valuation, this is an example, if this tower goes in, they're going to probably call me and ask what this is for. And I'll explain it to them, and that's because there's a lease agreement that spot has income producing and not just ag now. And, you, 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 and you're going to come up, you can come up with all kinds of scenarios where this could, this, this could cause a lot of problems. but got to follow what we're and, and for the most part it does make sense. You know, um, there is one thing that kind of worries me on there, one on the memo, and I can give you the memo if you want to. It, it lists a, a number of things. One is uh, anything that has to do with oil producing. That was my next question. Okay, so we have a thousand leases. Um, if we have to break out those tank batteries, and everything, that would be a tax to the landowner. You know, so they could get a tax for the real estate part because that lease sits there and they may get taxed in for the oil then also if they're part of the you know, real town. But, but what's really kind of, you got to change your thinking on this here is the tower is exempt through Kansas statutes, but we're still taxing we're not taxing the tower though, mm -hmm. we're taxing the site. All right. Same for the wind farms and same for the, the power lines. The power lines may be state assessed or totally exempt. Mm -hmm. But we're not taxing that locally. We're taxing the land use is where you have to get back in that mindset. Now like yours and stuff like that, the individual ones, that won't that's not affected. You can have it. Thanks. It must not work very good because that was pretty quick. You never got used to it. So they never gave me nothing. So to let you know that's coming down and down the pipe too now. So that's probably more than what you want to know today. No, that's fine. It's good news. Do so. we have anything else? No. That's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything? No. Anything? No. We're adjourned.